What's up, my buddies? I hope things are good. Hey, here's what we're gonna do today. Um, I've made something really good for you. Again, I'm gonna work really hard not to waste your time on these videos. I wanna be clear. What we're gonna do on this channel, um, or on this playlist on my channel, is I'm gonna show you how to convert a coupe to a fastback. And what I found was is that nobody was going through this and really analyzing how to do it and nobody was trying to figure out what are the best ways. And so some of the things I'm gonna show you are things I learned from somebody else. I watched them, listened to them, whatever. Some of the things I'm gonna teach you are directly connected to the mistakes I've made. So I made some mistakes along the way um, building a car. And so I'm gonna give you the hacks, but I'm gonna show you some things because I asked some questions and these things um, saved me some money and they saved me some anguish. Some of these things are because later I was like, oh my gosh, that was a huge mistake. I need to make a note of that, and I did. And so I'm kind of a detail-oriented person. I'm a pastor by trade. I do this part-time. I had somebody mention in one of the comments that you just have too much, you have all that time to work on it. Everybody don't have all that time to work on it. I don't have all that time to work on it. I work on this car a couple of few hours a week at most. And that's just if I have time and nothing else is coming up. So it's something I enjoy doing. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not trying to get it finished right away, but I am going to try to help you understand as much as you can. So last, the last video link will be in the description. I talk about how to build that car for $6,000 and how I did it. Um, and, and really the, the, the key starting point to saving that kind of money is a checklist that I put together. And, um, this is yours. This is going to be yours. It's free at no cost to you. The only thing you need to do is like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, in my description, in the description of this video is my email address. Click that email address, send it and say, hey, I, I liked and subscribed, I need this list, I need your list or whatever, or I need the list, whatever. Whatever you wanna write in that. Send it to me, I will email this back to you in a PDF format. This is a list you're gonna need to look at and use when you get ready to go buy your coupe. It's gonna be absolutely positively critical that you have this list when you get ready to buy your coupe. What I've done is, is I've taken out the hard work, I've done all the hard work for you, and I've put together a list that's even color coded. I'll send it to you in a PDF that'll all be color. And what it's gonna do is, is give you exactly what you need to be looking at and looking for when you go looking for your coupe. And so, let me give you, first of all, we're gonna start on the bench and then I'm gonna take you to the car and I'm gonna show you specific things you need to be looking for because if you miss some of these things, then it's gonna cost you more money or it's gonna cost you more time or it's gonna be both in the end. And you don't wanna do that. The, a project like this, you don't need to add to the complexity of it because it's already complex enough. It's already hard enough. You ultimately want a fastback and you want it for a price that you can afford. And so how are you gonna do that? You're gonna to have to have the right coupe for that to come about, or you're gonna wind up having, you know, I, I don't, I didn't want a VIN number fastback that's worth, you know, $100,000 that I could never drive that would be set into my carport. I also didn't want a project that never gets finished. You know that one that ever, you walk into somebody's garage and you're like, oh my gosh, behind all those boxes, you know, behind that, that, the, the yard sale items and all the stuff that you've cleaned, oh my gosh, there's a car back there. Yeah, that's my, my project. Oh, really? When were you working on it last? Well, like six years ago, and then ultimately that car winds up getting sold. So if we can take out some of the snags and some of the, you know, the delays, then maybe it won't remain a project, but instead that project will turn into something that you can actually enjoy. So let me give you the first thing. I'm gonna call these the three rules. It's right here at the very top of this list. Again, this list is yours. Like and subscribe to my channel. Click the email address in, my, in the description of this video. Say, hey, I want the list and I'll send it to you. It's yours free, PDF, no obligation, no strings attached. Three rules for buying a coupe. I'm gonna call this the three golden rules, all right? First is this, is you wanna buy the most complete car that you can possibly get. You want the car with all the parts there. It, if it's disassembled, disassembled, that's not that big of a deal. Don't let that intimidate you. In fact, I would say many times it being disassembled is to your favor. Number one, you'd have to disassemble it anyway. Number two, there's plenty of videos, there's plenty of things out there, and even when I'm walking you through with mine, you're gonna learn how to put it back together. Um, so they saved you time by disassembling it. Number two, you're, you're not gonna not know how to put it back together because there's, they're pretty simple cars and there's 
plenty of videos out there. The, the third thing is, is a disassembled car tends to diminish its value. When it the less that vehicle looks like a car, the more advantageous it is for you as a buyer. That, that project I told you about, the guy's got in his garage that he's done stripped all the way down and it's up on blocks and, or maybe I saw one the other day, it was on a rotisserie. Guy had a rotisserie in his carport, full of parts. He's, he's pulled the parts out, put them back, hadn't touched it in two years. That car doesn't look much like a car. The less it looks like a car, the more it is to your advantage as a buyer. Because the buyer can look at that and go, man, there's a lot of work to be done. Although you would have had to done that work anyway, it's a good negotiating term. So get the most complete car that you can. Here's the reason why. I know you're going to say, well, there's parts on that car I'm not going to use because the conversion parts are going to replace them. That's true. But those parts are saleable. And remember, we're trying to do this on a budget. So when you go to cut the roof off, I'm going to show you how to cut it off where you can resell that roof, the inner structure in your coupe. If you don't use the coupe inner structure, which you can do, by the way, and save even more money than I saved because I bought the inner structure. If you're going to use it, then, then good. But if you're not, then I'm going to show you how to drill out those spot welds and take that inner structure out. You can't buy a coupe inner structure anywhere. You can't buy them. Nobody sells them. Well, that is a valuable item. Put it on eBay, put it somewhere, and guess what? You're going to make some money off of it. I would say a coupe inner structure out of an old, rotted, nasty, messed up coupe is probably worth more than the old, ratty, nasty, messed up coupe, just to be honest with you. Get the most complete car that you can. Secondly, get the least damage, rot, and problem car that you can. Okay, and I'm gonna talk to you about wreck damage and other things when I actually get deeper into the list, but you want a car that's not just completely demolished. You don't want every fender to have a bunged up spot on it or anything like that. Um, take your time. Third rule, take your time. The key to finding a good Mustang for a conversion is you be will, being willing to take the, take your time. What we tend to do is we go, I gotta have one. You know, we run out there and we, we go to get one. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna, you wanna take your time. Now, let me, let me jump into the list. I'm gonna walk through a little bit of it and then I'm gonna take you to the car and I'm gonna show you some specific things that you're gonna be looking for. First thing that you have to have for a, a coupe to be viable for a conversion that you're ultimately gonna drive. Now, if you're gonna build this into a drag car and it's never gonna go onto the street or you're gonna do something with it like, I don't know, drift car or something, I don't know. Um, if you're gonna do something like that, then this won't matter, but it matters if you're gonna do, use this on the street. It has to have a title. I'm gonna say this so that you get it. Listen to me, a car without a title is nothing more than a parts warehouse. You cannot buy that car because it's a car. You have to buy it now because it has parts. If it does not have a title, it is not a car. And in some states, it's near impossible to get this rectified. I live in Arkansas, it's near impossible here to get a car without a title. And I know somebody's gonna say, oh, it's not that bad. It's not true. It is, do not believe them. I have wrestled, fought with, and worked with the revenue service here in Arkansas. And I'm telling you, the DMV does not work well when you don't have a title and it's on an old car. You have to track things down. There's, it's, it's next to impossible. Secondly, you don't want missing parts, rotted metal, significant wreck impact. I've, I've got a list now that I'm gonna walk you through. We're gonna go to the car and I'll walk you through a list of how I put this list together. I did it very organized. We are gonna go from the front of the car and we're gonna go to the back of the car. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this car and we're gonna pick up on each of these items and I'm gonna kinda show you what you need to be looking for when you go through this list. Now, let me explain the list before we go over there, all right? I've categorized the list and I've categorized it by three different colored highlights. The green highlight over the area that I'm talking about means that it's not a problem. Don't let it stop you from buying the car. The second one is a yellow highlight. This means go, green means go, yellow means caution, red means uh -uh. stop, get back, run. Um, that's what it means. So the green, you'll see some green areas. If, if that's messed up, broke, gone or whatever, it's not that big of a deal. The yellow means, hey, you got here's some caution. Here's what the main thing the yellow means. It doesn't necessarily mean no on buying the car, but what it does mean is if you go down this checklist, okay, and you're checking these things off on your car, and by the way, you can use this specific checklist and you're gonna make notes. As you check these, if you find the car you're looking at has a whole bunch of, let me show you this, has a whole bunch of yellow areas in it that, that it's got wrong, yellow adds up. The more things that are missing or damaged or whatever are gonna cost you more money. I've, uh, the yellow specifically talks about damage, rust, rot, missing, and, and it's specifically focused, well, not specific, primarily focused on the parts that are not gonna be replaced in the conversion. Now, red is a no-go, okay? Now, I'll give you one right here. Front wrecked impact that distorts the frame rails or the shock towers. That means a car that's been hit on the front, that the frame rails are messed up and the shock towers are, are out of alignment. If, and I'm gonna show you what that means in a second. 
That's a no-go. Why? Because that kind of repair work is gonna, in a heartbeat, can cost you so much money. If you're not an expert, professional, body person, don't tackle that. You're just making for yourself all kinds of trouble. If you've got a car that's been in a major wreck, it's a parts car. It's not a car that you wanna try to restore. You're not, um, you're not one of these major restoration people. You're a regular Joe trying to build a fastback as cheap as you can, and big old wrecked up cars do not make themselves available to poor people like us, okay? So let's go to the car, let's look at this, and let's see if we can figure out some of these things. Okay, so I'm at the front of my car, let me get my list here, I'm at the front of my car, and what I've got is, is this list, and I'm gonna try to take you from the front to the back, and I'm gonna actually walk you into it. But, uh, you know, the first thing on the list that I start off with is the front bumper, is it bent or missing? If it is, you're just, it's just gonna cost you something. It's a green, so it doesn't mean that it should stop you from buying the car, but all of these things have a cumulative effect on the overall cost and the amount of work that you're gonna put into the thing, so you keep that all in, a, in a consideration. Grill, grill accessories, are they bent or missing? If they are, you gotta look at that. If I was gonna put that grill back in there and use it again, I need to price those parts and I need to think about that. I would say before you go and buy this car, depending on how much familiarity that you have with a coupe Mustang or a Mustang in general, I'd become familiar with the grill parts and the stuff that's there. That way you can look at it at a glance and you can go, ooh, that's missing this part, that's missing this part, the headlight bucket's missing, da 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 da. Headlight bucket, speaking of which, let me, let me grab one, hold on. All right, so. This is a headlight bucket. You're gonna want these. They're expensive as crap, man. All this stuff is expensive as crap and it adds up. Um, I've had so many parts that I was gonna replace that I wound up repairing because in the end, when you, you add it plus shipping and everything else, but you wanna make sure these are here. Again, it's not, a, it's not a red light. It doesn't mean that you don't buy the thing. It just means that when you do buy it and you start into your project, you just have to know that part of your budget is gonna be eaten up by replacing these parts that are missing. Um, front quarter panels, all right? That, that's what I'm talking about right here. I'm gonna kind of pick you guys up. I'm gonna wiggle you around a little bit. Um, we're talking about the front quarter panels. These front quarter panels, uh, the front fenders, if you will, on the car are not replaced. They're not replaced when, when you do the, the conversion. So you're not gonna to wanna to have beat up, nasty front fenders and you can say, well, you can buy new ones, and I hear people say this all the time, you can buy new ones from, you know, one of these outlets or whatever, and they're only, you know, $200. Why would you mess with those old ones? Okay, a $200 fender times two. The other thing is you have to consider that they're shipped truck, and when you have something shipped by truck, y'all, listen to me, I'm not kidding you. You're gonna spend a ton of extra money when you, when you have that thing shipped that way. So just keep in mind, all of this adds up. So front quarter panels, you just wanna make sure that they're good. Um, the core support, and that's the part that holds the radiator, that's here in the front. This is the Valance, by the way. This is off a, that's the Valance, that's off of a 65 model Mustang. It's off of my coupe that's over here that I'm working on. That's a car that's fixing to be for sale as soon as I get the metal work done to it, which I'm fixing to get on that. I gotta get that done before I can get back on my fastback. But this is the core support right here. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through each of these parts. Let me change the perspective and let's you and I look at this together so we can really follow along a little better, I think. So let me show you again. This is the front Valance. This is off a 65 model Mustang, so it doesn't look exactly like this. But this is a Valance. This one is in pretty doggone good shape. I'm gonna reuse it. Don't think I ain't. That metal really does save you some money. When you start looking inside the car, you're gonna look at the core support. This is what holds the radiator. Um, you're gonna be looking at, these are the, the inner fender skirts, you're gonna look at those. Are they wrinkled up? Are they bent? Are they dented? You're gonna especially look on the passenger side. This is the battery tray box. This historically is gonna have a lot of rust on it. It's gonna have rust pits. If you've, if you've got a car that it's not rusted out right here, then you've probably got a pretty good car. You're gonna look at the shock towers. That's what these are. Both shock towers, you're gonna look for cracks. They, they normally have cracks in them. These, these were a, a point of real stress on the old um, unibody cars that Ford made. And so it's a good possibility you have cracks. That doesn't mean that it's a no-go, it just means you've gotta make a note of it that they're cracked and if they are cracked, you have to repair them. I've repaired this one and I've repaired them in multiple places and I've, I'll show you when we get into the build how to reinforce these and make these actually much stronger. Mine are gusseted and you're gonna, you're gonna find that out. The rear fender skirt, you're gonna look at that. The firewall, how does it look? Has it got rust holes in it? Is it, is it messed up? Is there something wrong with it? Um, you're gonna look at all that. You're gonna go under the car. You're gonna look down underneath there and you're gonna look at the suspension. Is the suspension there? It's not necessarily a no-go, but if it's not there, 
then you got to look at you know the parts that you're going to have to replace with that. So this is your cowl. Inside this cowl, if you look down inside these vents inside here, you're going to look in there. You're going to look for rust. Okay. You're going to look towards the edges. You're going to use you a flashlight. Let me just tell you this, and I know this is going to sound crazy. If it is rusted out inside of this, I'm going to say that's a red line for this car, for the car that you're looking at. Unless it's one heck of a deal, changing out the cowl on one of these cars is doable. But listen to me, these spot welds and the amount of work that it takes to pull that out, replace that, y'all, I'm just going to tell you on the front end, I don't believe it's worth it. I really don't believe it's worth it. Let me see what else we've got on here. All right, so guys, let me show you where I'm at. This is the front quarter panel, okay? And this is the front tire. Inside that front fender well, right here, what you're seeing on this, right here, this area right here, and back up against that frame rail, this is a torque box. There's a box that's inside of this thing. You're gonna inspect it from the front, the side, you're gonna inspect it from the bottom, you're gonna look at it on the inside of it, on this underneath the car, on the back side of it, where, it, where it's right up against the floor support. You're gonna check this thing out. That torque box, it's only found on the driver's side of a 67 model Fastback, but on a, I mean 67 model Mustang, but on a 68 model, it's on both sides. And if you find a 67 coupe that you're gonna build, I would have you consider putting a torque box on the passenger side as well. It sure will make the car a lot firmer and you're really gonna need that, especially in the conversion. So that's the torque box. Here's the suspension, stuff that we talked about. You're gonna to try to see if that's missing or if, or if it's not. This is the front frame rail. You're gonna inspect that. That's the ends, this is the outside of those front fender skirts. There's your shock tower. You're gonna to look at it from the inside as well. Your suspension, the suspension quality and all that kind of stuff really doesn't matter. Um, you're probably going to wind up having to replace that anyway, unless you bought a car that's in really, really fine shape and someone's already redone it for you. So, so there's that. Now, let me go underneath the car and I'll show you something else. Okay, we're looking underneath the car, front quarter panel, underneath the car. I'm going to kind of try to take you underneath there if I can, okay? Remember the thing I told you about right here? This is the torque box. You're going to inspect it from this side all the way up. This piece right here, this piece is the floor support right here. You're going to inspect that. You're going to make sure that that's good metal. You're going to tap on both sides of it. You're going to look at it real good. Now, my car, let me pop this off. My car actually has an X-brace subframe connector. You're probably not gonna have that in the car that you buy. You're gonna put it in there though because I'm gonna show you how to do it and you're gonna need to have that in there. But you're gonna look at these. This is your floor pan. Most of the floor pans most likely are gonna be torn, are gonna be rusted out of the car that you're gonna build. Mine are brand new. I put them in myself, they're a little dirty. But I did put those in. Now, back here, I'm gonna show you something else. This is not considered a torque box, but it should be because really, this is like a rear torque box, and I don't really know what they call it. But right here, this right here is another box that you're going to want to inspect. This is heavy metal, runs out to the outer edge, which ties the unibody together, okay? Now, don't look at any of this stuff. This is stuff that I've added to it. I've added all of this. This is not going to be in yours, but you are going to look at this right here, the metal, the thick metal that's found underneath the car. So your torque boxes are up there. And you're going to follow your, your way all the way down, rocking down at the end of the door. There's the end of the door. Down underneath the rocker, you're going to look at this piece of metal right here. You're going to kind of inspect how good is that metal, where are the, the leaf springs. Now, my leaf springs have been moved in, and I'll talk to you about how we're going to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that, matter of fact. Um, your leaf springs would actually come right in here. You're going to look at the metal that's in here. All of that heavy metal that's in that area needs to be in, in good shape. And you're going to get down here and really inspect this stuff, and you're going to look at it. Um, you're going to look at the rocker panels. The rocker panels, if they're rotted out, doesn't it's not really that big of a deal. You can replace those. Um, the kit, if you buy the complete kit, comes with them. Now, you're going to want to make sure that the door's good. The door is not a part of the kit. And so how good your doors are makes a difference. Why? Because you don't want to have to replace them. You want to make sure that door's good. Um, you're going to inspect that. You're going to look inside the car. If the floors are rotted out and chances are they are, that's not a red line. Remember, I've given you this list. I'm going to give you this list to look at. And this list is going to help you understand exactly what you need to do. And the doors are beyond repair or missing, or the window mechanisms are missing, or the door handles are missing, or the rocker panels have holes in them. Those are yellow items. That means that they're not deal-enders, 
but they're going to cost you something and you're going to have to replace them or buy them. You're not going to run around with a car without doors on it. And so you're going to want to make sure you get the doors on it. So if it's got bad doors, you got to think about what does that cost me and, and what have I got to deal with that. Now, moving on back, roof damage. It's not going to matter. If your roof is damaged, that's going to be in the kit. But here's what I will tell you. If the roof is bad, it, it's not, not a deal ender for you on your coupe. But here's what I will tell you. If the roof is good, if the roof shell is good, if the sails are good on that roof that, of the car that you've got, that's a good saleable item. That roof, if you cut it off well, and even if the rear quarter panels are decent on your car, you can cut that off as one piece. That piece by itself might be worth, worth four or $500. And guess what you just did? You just saved yourself some money and made a little bit of money. That's what you did. We're going to keep working our way down this list, okay? Now remember, you can get this list. All you got to do is like and subscribe. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'm going to send you, you're going to, you're going to email me, and I'm going to email this list back to you in a PDF form, and it's yours for free. So it's just a value statement, y'all. You're getting value here. What are we talking about? Okay, trunk floor and trunk damage. You know, mine doesn't have a trunk in it here, but, but you know, if, if the, it's got trunk damage in it's not really that big of a deal. It's just going to cost you a little bit of money. That's not a deal ender whatsoever, but that is something that you want to, you want to think about rear tail light panel let me show you this it's this particular assembly this does not come with the fastback kit you would have to buy it it's this piece right here this panel right here okay that the tail light set in if you if it's good in the car that's a plus that's something you don't have to buy you can leave that connected to the to the the trunk floor pan when you cut the body off and it makes putting this body back on a little bit easier to be honest with you is the rear suspension missing um the trunk lid doesn't matter. It would just give you something to sell if the trunk lid's there, but if it's gone, that's not a deal ender. Suspension missing, rear inner wheel housing. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about with the rear inner wheel housing. A lot of those are going to have damage. I'm going to show it to you from the back of this car. What I'm talking about is right here. These, these here. You're going to look at those and inspect them. You're going to see if they're rusted out. See this one, I've got a new inner wheel housing, ex outer wheel housing in this one. The inner is still there and I'm going to, I'm fixing to put these back together, but it's got some rust problems I'm going to have to address before I go forward. Um, if you buy the complete kit, um, the inner wheel housing comes with it. Okay. Okay, I know you're probably feeling like you're drinking out of a fire hose as I'm walking through this, but remember, you've got this list. I'm gonna give you this whole list. It's got details on it. It's gonna tell you things to look for. I've got notes in this list. Y'all, listen, I, this video is great, but you're gonna want this list. Like and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna give it to you. So let me walk through the, the rest of this. Rear suspension, those wheel housings, you're gonna look at those. They're not deal enders, but they're yellow. This list is color coded. So when you're looking for your coupe to convert to a fastback, you're gonna see the things that you absolutely cannot live with. Um, and you can see the things that are gonna cost you some money, but you may wanna go along with it. Let me give you this one, one word. Everything on here in yellow is a caution. It doesn't mean no, for sure don't do it. It does mean though you gotta think about it. If you've got a car, and I'm gonna, you're gonna see this on the list, I'm gonna talk about it this way too. If you've got a car that's got a bunch of yellow, I must talk about having a bunch of yellow or some reds, or it's almost all green. Um, if it's got a bunch of yellow, that means these things that I told you, you know, are not deal enders in themselves, but you might have more than one of these. There's, an, a, there's a cumulative effect of having a lot of stuff missing. So all of these things start adding up because unless you're doing a resto mod where you're absolutely gonna get rid of all those things, not planning on using any of them, you're talking about spending a lot of extra money. A few of these things that are in yellow on a car are not bad, but the more of them, the more money you spend, the more time you're gonna have into it. So if the front bumper's bent or missing, you go, that's not really a big deal, till it comes time to buy it. You gotta spend a couple hundred dollars getting it. And, and what will happen is, is when a car is damaged, when your coupe is, is kinda got some damage on it, or when your coupe that you're trying to buy has a bunch of parts missing, it'll nickel and dime you to death. So you're gonna use this list to go to look at these cars. This is how you're gonna inspect them. So, so let me give you the budget. Let me give you some budget breakdowns and let me show you how this, this build a $6,000, a fastback for $6,000, thing kind of work. There's a lot of cars out there that you can get. Again, I'm going to go back to this. Don't buy one without a title. If it doesn't have a title, that's not even worth considering. What can you expect to spend? 
Okay, so let's look in the, to, to the $500 to $1,000 range. The $500 to $1,000 range is probably a rust bucket that's got most of the parts missing. It's probably somewhere in somebody's field. Somebody's already taken it apart and they've robbed parts off of it and it's a mess. It'll seem like a good idea because you're like, you can kind of recognize that it's a Mustang and you go, man, this will be good. You're probably not gonna get the car that you're gonna want to use in the conversion for $1,000, okay? You're just probably not. $1,500 to $2,000 range, probably more of the same. I've just not seen very many $2,000 coupe Mustangs that I would say are viable, all right? So I wouldn't expect that. So the three to $4,000 range, I would say the three to $4,000 range is probably where you're looking. What, what should you get for a three to $4,000 coupe Mustang that you're gonna use um, as a conversion? And all of this, again, all of these categories I'm talking through right now is on this list. Um, three to four thousand dollar. It should be a roller. That means the suspension part should be there. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're new or ready to run on the street, but they should be there. Could have good floor pans, but if it doesn't have good floor pans, that's not a deal ender. These cars at this age, at this price range, you're probably gonna have to put floor pans in them. That's probably true. I would say the body parts need to be pretty good metal. If you're spending three to $4,000, especially on the $4,000 side, I would expect for the quarter panels to be there. I would expect the rooftop to be good metal. Um, I would expect window glass to be in it, although you're not gonna use the window glass, most of which you will use the vent windows, but besides that, you won't use the rest of it, but they're saleable. Those are items you can recoup some of your money. I would expect them to be there in that price range. Does it need to have a motor for three or $4,000? Unless you're gonna go with a retro motor in your car, in other words, a 289 or a 302, uh, possibly a 351. Unless you're gonna go with one of those motors, you don't really need the motor in the car. That's just something that gets them a chance to add more cost to it. I would rather have a car without a motor that has better body components, more suspension parts, better interior, if you will, than a car that has a motor, because I'm gonna probably change that out no matter what. So that's kind of what side I would err on. I would expect it to have the, the chrome pieces and the interior parts at the $4,000 range. I would expect those things to be there. Now, is the interior gonna be perfect? Probably not, but it needs to be there. The parts need to be there, the dash parts, the glove box, those kind of things. If you're going to build the interior back to that factory Mustang style interior, those parts are freaking crazy expensive. A, a car that's in that $4,000 range shouldn't have very much yellow from the list should not have a lot of yellow on it and it shouldn't have any red I wouldn't do any of the red ones and so let me go let me just recap the red stuff front wreck or impact so if that car's been wrecked it's been hit in the back or hit in the front and it's major wreck impact that's a red line I wouldn't do it man it's a great deal the car's in great shape except for the front end got caved in by a diesel truck Yes, all of that sounds good, but aligning all those parts, if you're not a body person and putting that together or paying somebody to do it, you, you can easily drop four to $5,000 in a car fixing an impact. So I would say no to that. Rust in the cowl, I'd say no to that. It's just a, too big of a job. I'd say if the torque boxes are rusted out, I'd say no to that. If the floor supports have rust holes in them, I'd say no to that. It's pretty invasive to change those out. Those out. You can change them. I have changed them, I know how to change them. I'm just telling you one of the big issues you're gonna face, keep this in mind, keep this in mind. When you start into a project like this, you have this enthusiasm and excitement, but as this thing drags on, and the more you add to it, and the longer it takes, listen to me, I'm telling you right now, the longer it takes, the less you're gonna to want to do all these menial tasks. Changing torque boxes takes a certain type of person, I promise you. You could expect to spend in that three to $4,000 range, that's probably what you need to spend for a coupe. I have people say, well, what if I wanna spend more than that? What if I found one for 10 grand, it's awesome. By the time you get through converting a $10,000 coupe, let's say it's in great condition, by the time you get through converting it and you pay for the conversion kit and you cut this whole thing open, which will be sickening to your stomach if it's a really nice car, nice interior, whew, it would hurt your heart. You're gonna probably have more in it than, than what you should. I did have somebody reach out to me and say, hey, I've got this really nice coupe it's mine, I wanna convert it to a fastback. It's got great interior and everything in it. I would do that, and here, here's why. The ceiling for the value of the car when it's finished is higher for a coupe to fastback conversion than it is for a coupe that isn't converted. And I know the coupe people are gonna lose their mind. Their heads just went, Poof. Scott, they're gonna say that's no way. Coupes are the best thing ever. To each his own. But when it comes to resale value, there is no doubt about it that a coupe to fastback conversion has a greater price potential um, than a coupe does if both of them are equally fixed up, if you will. So finally, let me say this again. So if you want this list, like and subscribe to the channel. If you've already done that, just email me in that email 
um, that is in the description of this video. I will send you a PDF of this list. That's the best way I can figure out how to do it. It's a very complete list, lots of details in it, lots of notes in it. It's gonna help you walk through and figure out what car you need for your coupe, the fastback conversion. Um, it's gonna be good, man. You need, to, you need this list. It's gonna help you a lot, I promise you. We gonna make us a fastback and it's gonna be good.